Hello, my name is Iron, and this is Iron's Tech. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video is a follow-up to one I made already about this 2013 MacBook Pro that I picked up from a junk shop. Uh, I have been using this now at work for one week, and I wanted to just let you know how it's been, what I think about it, and if I will continue to use it for the original the original purpose I had in mind. Um, so really quickly again, I got this from a junk shop. Um, I got it quite cheap. It was about $60 uh, because the battery had completely swelled up. The bottom was bulging down and I convinced the person in the shop to let it go for cheap. I brought it home. I gave it a good clean, changed the battery. I purchased a new battery from Amazon. It's a run power battery and I decided that I would try to use it for a week. It is a very nice computer. It's in very good condition. Very few little dents or knocks. There's a little couple of little scratches around. Actually using it more, I've discovered a couple little more nicks and scratches, but nothing major. It's still in very, very nice condition. I mean, even the, the plastic hinge bar thing on the back is still very, very solid, very nice. Not really moving at all. This, yeah, very good, very good condition computer considering where I got it from. Um, so let's move in to the the pros and cons, the things I've liked and the things I have disliked about using this at work for a week. Okay, so some negatives with this MacBook Pro. Um, not necessarily bad things, but or things I've not liked. Just things to bear in mind that might potentially be a problem if you do want to use one of these. It's fairly big. Um, I say that like compared to, you know, compared to a MacBook Air or my 12 inch Retina, it's, it's a little big. It's not huge as a computer, but it's definitely a step up in the size department compared to the other ones I generally use. Um, and it, it just takes up a little bit more room. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to just put on your lap or like sometimes I like to carry the computer around. Like if I just pull the camera out a bit, like just have it up like on one hand and just type like this. And on, on the 12 inch retina, it's very, very easy to do this. You can just pick it up and just walk around with it resting on, on your arm like that. And just, just do this. This computer, I, I mean, I've not been doing this for long already. I'm feeling it in my arm. Like it's, it's, it's quite big and weighty, I suppose as well. It's, it's reasonably heavy. It's a fair bit heavier than Fair, let's bring the camera back. A fair bit heavier than the both the Air and 12-inch Retina I've been using, and it's it's noticeable. Like it's bigger, heavier. Um, I purposely left it at work. I didn't carry it back and forward, you know, from from work to here, which is my house. Um, but just having that extra size and weight was definitely a negative for me. Um, some people, I imagine, it's not going to bother them at all, but it's something to bear in mind. Um, going back to the trackpad, a negative is definitely that it's not a forced touch trackpad. It's definitely a, a physical click and it's something that, you know, it could wear out over time. You could maybe get some dirt in here, which will stop it from working properly. Um, you can click it there, but you can't click it there. Like it's definitely something to bear in mind, um, but overall the trackpad's good, just it's not the same as one of the new ones in terms of usability. Um, the next thing I've noticed, uh, I've been doing a few like Skype calls and uh, Google Meet, actually mostly calls, and the, the the camera on here is 720p, which is supposedly the same as the MacBook Air M1, um, but the software, I think, is not up to par. Like the, the image quality is so much worse than on the MacBook Air. Um, the Retina MacBook also has a terrible webcam. The webcam's not good and the software's not good either. Um, so, I mean, it's about on, on par with with a 12 inch MacBook. Um, I think the 720p camera is supposedly better, but using them both, that they're, they're both not really up to up to scratch in 2023. Um, so the camera's not great. Then the speakers are the old style speakers. You've got them, they're, they're built kind of in inside here and the sound seems to be pushed out through the keyboard 
um, and it's, it's quite tinny. It sounds quite a bit like a like an iPhone kind of sound, um, and it, it does doesn't come anywhere close to to the ones on. I've got it. I've got it right here. So I'll just slide the camera over. It doesn't come anywhere close to these. You've got so the twelve inch Retina. You've got the speaker grill here, and so the sound just comes out of here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of bass, but it's so much clearer. And then you've got the M1 MacBook Air speakers are, are substantially better. They've got more bass, more clarity. And then when you get onto like a modern day Pro, those sound incredible. Um, so bear in mind, if you do want to pick one of these up or think of using one, the speakers are passable, but definitely for me, they're a con. They're not, they're not as good at all as some of the other choices I have. Um, the, the temperatures, and I noted it a little before, it does get really hot if it's doing anything demanding. Um, the top of the computer here will get untouchably hot and the underneath on the bottom would also be very hot to touch. Um, general basic things, it's not so bad. It just gets a little bit warm. And now it's, it's cool to touch. It's not hot at all, just sat on the desktop. Um, but doing anything remotely demanding, it will push those temperatures up. Again, not as much as the 12 inch MacBook, that thing does get really quite hot. Um, the M1 MacBook Air much better in that regard, but this one, it does get hot if you do anything demanding and that fan will kick on and start whooshing away if it needs to cool itself down. It won't hold back on kicking on the fan. But generally like browsing the internet, watching some, pay, what, you know, um, watching some Maybe 1080p YouTube would be all right. Anything beyond that, you're going to get the temperature's going to kick up. And the like pages, things like that, it, it won't get too hot. Video editing, gaming, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be very, very hot if you're doing that kind of thing. Um, something else, I talking about the ports again, um, I use a lot now of USB-C accessories because my... 12 inch MacBook has USB-C, my M1 MacBook Air has USB-C, and so I, I now have a lot of USB-C accessories kicking around, and of course, none of those are going to work on this MacBook. So that for me was a little bit of a con, a, a problem for me. Like at work, I, I have a USB-C charger, which I use to charge up things, and I took this to work and was like, oh, I can't use that now. So I had to change that around with the MagSafe charger, and having MagSafe as the only way to charge this is a bit of a problem. If I forget that MagSafe charger, that's it. Like I can't charge the computer, you know? So that is definitely a, a bit of a problem. Like I love MagSafe, but not having the secondary option of just plugging in a USB-C cable is is a bit of is a bit problematic. Um, it happened once. Luckily the battery held out as it's a new battery, it's doing all right there. Um, but yeah, no USB-C is a bit of a problem. And then the main con, the main issue I've bumped into with this computer is actually something I really didn't expect. Um, the display, it has been really nice. It's a really good display, really clear retina display. I almost prefer it to the one on my MacBook Air. It's, it's a really, really nice display. But I've noticed some ghosting on this or like retention. So if I keep something on the same, the same image or the same screen for a long time, it will retain what was there before. I'm not sure if you're gonna make it out on the camera, but if I hit, um, if, I, yeah, if I do this, and if I go right up to the corner, maybe you can't see this, up, if I'm just gonna focus for me, maybe you can't make it out, but up here, I can see the little apple, and I can see all of like the, the edit, the view, the file, all the little things up there. And actually here, I can just about make out that folder that was on my desktop. So if I go back, this desktop folder, I can still see like a ghosty image of that. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it just, it doesn't seem to do it. Like it seems to be occasionally, which makes me think it might be the display adapter that's playing up there. If anyone knows what causes this um, or has an idea, things I can look into, please let me know because it's such a nice screen and it's a bit strange that it's doing this ghosting. Yeah, so the screen ghosting is, is a definite negative and, and it's something that, it's something you notice, especially when it's on a high brightness, you'll, you'll see that screen retention 
and, and icons being there. If you're editing photos, that can be, I, I don't use this to edit photos, but I imagine if you did, that could become quite a problem if you've got parts of the previous photo kind of retaining on the screen. When you're trying to edit a new picture, I can see that being quite a problem. Um, so it'll be something to look into. It could potentially be restricted to just this year's MacBook Pro. Um, I will need to look into that a bit more, but definitely an issue there is the display retention. All right, so the pros, things I have liked about this computer using it for a week at work. Uh, first off, the display. Uh, the display has been really, really nice. It's practically the same display as display, sorry, as on my M1 MacBook Air. Um, and it's the same display, but bigger as on my 12 inch MacBook. Um, the thing I like, it seems to be sharper. It seems a little crisper and clearer than the display on my M1 MacBook Air. I'm not too sure why that is. Maybe the MacBook Air uses some kind of, of softening or some kind of softener app. I'm, I'm not really sure what's happening there, but this display just seems a little bit clearer and crisper. Like all the icons just seem a little more defined. And I don't know whether it's the quality of the panel or or just the, the background I have on here, but it, there's something about it. It just looks really nice and clear. And it's also plenty bright enough. I mean, even now I've got it nearly full. That's full right there. Uh, this is in direct light as well. Um, it's, I've, I've not had any issue with the brightness on this screen. It's, it's plenty bright enough. So really nice display. I've really enjoyed that full retina display. Um, very good. There was one little, well, I say little, one problem with the display, but overall the display has been great. Um, the keyboard has also been really, really nice. This is the same keyboard that is on the old MacBook Air. Um, it's like the chiclet style one. It's just, it's 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 really nice. It sounds nice. It's it's a good feel. It's got a lovely amount of travel. Really, really nice keyboard. Um, I have another video talking about keyboards. Um, this one is in that video. Um, it's it's a really really nice keyboard. So no complaints at all about the keyboard. Um, the trackpad is surprisingly good. Um, it's it doesn't come close to the the trackpad on the newer computer. So the M1 MacBook Air, I've got the the 12 inch Retina. It because it, it doesn't have the the force touch. This is a, a physical up and downy click, and um, you can see it moving there. It's like a diving board style. Um, it still feels really good. It still has all of the gestures. Um, if I go, you can you can do the three finger gesture like that. You can bring in the, all the icons there. So it's, it still does all the features. It still feels nice. It's glass top. It's very nice and smooth, but it just, the, having the physical click is a little bit of a problem for some. Um, I didn't find it a problem. It's good. I like it. The trackpad is definitely a pro for this computer. Um, it's, it's very nice. The computer itself was was surprisingly snappy, actually. I mean, it, the the processor in this one is the I think it's a two point six i five, and it it was more than happy. Oh, hello, focus. It was more than happy at at doing one task at a time, maybe two at a time. If I tried to open many many things, um, it would get a bit cross and get hot, and fans would start spinning up, and I would notice it start to chug a little bit, but. One thing at a time, couple of things going. You can have like Google, maybe open some pages, have a message or app open as well. It would be, it would be okay there. No, no issue doing that whatsoever. Again, the control panel and all the icons and just navigating is, is really smooth, really nice, no problem. For its age, it's actually quite impressive how smoothly it handles this. Uh, it's macOS Big Sur. It won't go any further than Big Sur, but I found it's not a problem in big so everything's working fine it's it's solid the temperatures um right now it's sitting at around 60 degrees i think it's probably doing something with photos i have noticed that the the photo app seems to do a lot of of backing up or copying a so significant energy use photos um and it does pull the temperature up a little bit but I've only ever seen this temperature go go really, really, really high if I'm trying to run a game or something. Like if I'm trying to run World of Tanks Blitz or another game like that, 
um, that is when the temperature does start to climb up really high. But doing anything else, like just basic things, it, it's not a problem. Uh, the temperature is, I'd say it's between my 12 inch MacBook, which gets really quite hot, and my M1 MacBook Air, which stays cool almost the entire time. Unless I'm doing you know, video editing or again, playing a game can get it warm too. But um, yes, it's pretty good. The fans don't kick on all that much. It's not bothered me. The fans haven't been horribly loud for any reason. Uh, right now it says they're running at 1286 RPM. I cannot hear them. Um, I've got a, a refrigerator I can hear, but this computer, no, nothing, no sound. Another pro for this computer and something I've really, really enjoyed is around here. The ports. Okay, so having a, I'm just gonna refocus the camera. Having an HDMI port has been really, really good. Um, usually at work, I've been using the USB-C to HDMI adapter from Apple and that's worked fine. It's been, it's been good. It's just not having to worry about that at all and just plugging straight into the computer and off you go. That has been really, really nice. Um, the SD card slot, I honestly, I don't, generally use SD cards a whole lot, but it's nice to have. HDMI has been fantastic. And again, USB-A is it's just, it's useful. You know, you're gonna use it. I use a mouse sometimes with this computer and it's got a little USB-A dongle I can just plug in. It's you know, really, really good. I'll just show you the other side with the ports as well. Um, and on here I've got my headphone jack. I've got USB-A again, and two Thunderbolt ports, which again, I've not used these to be honest, um, but it's nice to have them. And MagSafe, which is just great. Like having MagSafe again, it's like an old friend, you know, it's, I've used USB-C charging for so long. Uh, having MagSafe back was, was a really nice change. Just that added convenience and safety of, if I snag the cable, it just pops right out. It's, yeah, MagSafe was fantastic to have back. All right, so with regards to using the 2012 MacBook Pro for work. I actually did not make it to the end of the full week using this. I ended up switching back to this one, which is my 12 inch retina. Um, the reason is basically having a computer in my bag all the time, which I can use whenever I want, on a bus, on a train, in a coffee shop, wherever, is so convenient and it's such a nice small size. I can just carry it around like a plate. Like it's ridiculous how light this thing is. Um, and the one port issue is a problem, but, but it's not too bad. The screen's good. It doesn't have the same screen retention problem that the Pro does. It's smaller, lighter, easier to use. And the little boost in power that I get from the Pro, which it is more powerful, um, it's just, for the things I do at work, it, it just wasn't worth it. Having something a bit more portable I can carry around, show people um, just the size difference and the weight difference is is ridiculous. So this, if it's a contest, uh, I, I, I personally, this MacBook 12 inch wins for the purpose I need it for every time. Um, the screen on this, this, except for the retention, is much better and it's bigger, the keyboard's nicer and everything, but just after using it for almost a week, I, I just I just switched back. Um, so instead, I have another idea of something I could do with this computer and it ended up becoming something else. Okay, so deciding that my 12 inch MacBook was a better all around computer to use at work, I put this 13 inch MacBook Pro to use in another way. And as you can see, I have installed Windows 10 on it. And as a Windows 10 computer, this thing has been really good. And it is now my go-to Windows computer. That's it. Like it's completely taken over my little netbook I used to use. Um, and it's, it's actually very, very smooth. As a, as a Windows device. Um, if I just open up Chrome, for example, um, it's, it's loading nice and quickly, really quick. I can go I can go and look around. Let's go to a news website. It's really snappy, really quick, really responsive. If, if anything, it's, let's just accept that. If anything, it's, 
it's more responsive than on Mac OS. Like it, it really is running Windows 10 very, very well here. Uh, let's maybe try, try one more time. Again, straight back in, let's maybe go to YouTube. Again, that loaded pretty quick. I can scroll down the videos. They're loading in pretty well. Like, yeah, very, very nice, very good experience. Um, so Windows 10 is, is working really well and this, this has now become my Windows 10 device. Um, I've installed Windows 10 using Boot Camp. I've used half of the 500 gigabyte capacity of this for Windows and the other half is still on Mac OS Big Sur. I also plan to use this for simple Steam gaming. I've already downloaded Steam. I have not got any games on here yet actually, but I will be getting a few. Um, I think some, some older some older games, I might even go as far as installing Red Faction again. I've not played that game for a while. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'll see how that goes. Maybe get back to about playing some older games on here. Um, but yeah, so 2013 MacBook Pro as a Windows device it is great. It's really running nicely. Okay, so this has been my review, I suppose, after a week with the 2013 13 inch MacBook Pro. And yeah, it's ended up becoming something I didn't expect it to become really. Um, I would definitely suggest picking one up if you can find it for a cheap enough price. I mean, like I said, I got it for about $60 and I got a battery for about 40, so $100 all in. If you can get one for that price and you have a definite use for it in mind, I would say go for it. They're still really good. They do only go up to Big Sur, so be aware of that. But yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. Um, if I didn't have this one um, as, as something to use at work, and also my, you know, my M1 MacBook Air if I need something a bit more powerful, um, this, this would be my daily computer. But, you know, as I do have those available, this has now become a different type of device for a different job. But if you see one for a good enough price, about $100, and it's working, even with the screen retention thing I've got, this is still worth it for me. It's still a good device. And it has, you know, it has a job. It, it, it does its job as a Windows device now very well. It's very smooth, very snappy, and they are enjoying using it. So my name is Iron, this is Iron's Tech, and once again, thank you for listening.